On 22nd June 2022, in auction 371, we at Künker will be auctioning Dr. Pavel Lischka's collection of Czechoslovak gold coins from the years 1923 to 1982. This is perhaps the most extensive collection to come onto the market to date, featuring all the great rarities of Czechoslovak coinage. In 1923, the Czechoslovak Republic minted its first gold coins to mark the fifth anniversary of the fledgling state. On the obverse, these coins depict the Bohemian lion with its double tail. On its chest, the lion bears the Slovak coat of arms featuring the patriarchal cross and the trimount. The reverse depicts St. Wenceslas, with the banner and the eagle shield of the Przemyslitz. To the left of the saint, we see the signature OS, which stands for the engraver Ottokar Spaniel. On the right is a small B for the artist Jaroslav Benda, who designed the template for this die. These gold coins were minted in the value of one or two ducats. 1,000 of the one ducat coins refer specifically to the fifth anniversary of the founding of the Czechoslovak Republic. The obverse of these coins features the founding date, 28 October and the years 1918 and 1923. The coins are also numbered consecutively on the reverse. Afterwards, this coin type was adopted for the mass minting of the new trade currency, which was minted by the Kremnitzer Mint each year as needed. Trade coins were, as the name suggests, intended for trade. While the citizens of Czechoslovakia paid for their daily shopping in Corona and Halle, wholesalers conducted their international transactions in ducats. Austria was their most important trading partner. There, the mint in Vienna was still minting the ducats of Emperor Franz Josef with the year 1915, which were compatible with the Czechoslovak ducats. The coin design with St. Wenceslas was not chosen at random. On the contrary, he has been a key symbolic figure for Czech national identity since at least the 19th century. Wenceslas came from the Przemyslid dynasty and ruled the Kingdom of Bohemia during the 10th century. He declared himself a Christian and was murdered. He was therefore predestined to be venerated as a martyr. The Bohemian kings who were descended from Wenceslas encouraged the veneration of their ancestor and so St. Wenceslas became first the patron saint of Bohemia and then the national saint of all Czech people. Historians had calculated that 28 September 1929 would have been the thousandth anniversary of Wenceslas' death. The Czech church had spent years planning for this anniversary. It would be celebrated together with the completion of St. Vitus Cathedral in Prague, which had been under construction for 600 years. The young Czechoslovak Republic picked up this idea and ran with it. And in this context, the decision was made to adorn the new coins with the image of St. Wenceslaus. This coin was issued in 1928, one year before the great event. It too depicts St. Wenceslas above the Bohemian Lion, in fact. Wenceslas is leading an army of knights, an allusion to a legend that was widely known in Czechoslovakia. According to this legend, the last two side knights retreated to the Blanik mountain following their defeat, where they sleep until the fatherland is in mortal danger. Then St. Wenceslas will lead them to defend the Czech people. The reverse depicts St. Procopius. He was venerated by the miners of Kremnitsa as their patron saint because he is said to have once forced the devil to plough a deep furrow into the earth so that they could reach their treasures.
This coin is therefore paying tribute to the mines of Kremnitsa, where, as indicated in the inscription, the metal for the coin came from. Incidentally, the little K on the obverse of the coin stands for the Kremnitsa mint, where all Czechoslovak gold coins were minted. And that brings us to 28 September 1929, which marked the 1000th anniversary of St. Wenceslas' death. 750,000 people are said to have traveled to Prague to attend the grand celebrations. No less than three different types of commemorative gold coins were issued. This coin type depicts St. Wenceslas twice, once standing on the obverse and again on horseback on the reverse. He is accompanied by two angels. In the exerc we can see the anniversary dates 929 and 1929. This is the second coin type, minted to commemorate the anniversary. The obverse depicts St. Wenceslas as the head of the Knights of Blanik. The reverse focuses on the murder of St. Wenceslas. His enemies are said to have slain him in front of the church because a treacherous priest kept its gate locked. This is the very moment that is depicted on the coin. St. Wenceslas bangs the door knocker in vain as he stepped from behind. This is probably the best known of the three coin types, which was also minted for the first time during this anniversary year, although it seems it was intended from the beginning to be an annual trade coin of 10 and 5 ducats. After all, below the coat of arms, the coin not only features the denomination, but also a year, which is clearly separated from the year of St. Wenceslas' death in the coin design. The death date and St. Wenceslas himself dominate the reverse. This image of the saint is inspired by the relics that are still preserved in St. Vitus Cathedral to this day. Wenceslas wears the helmet of St. Wenceslas, which, according to old inventories, has been among the preserved relics since 1354. It is a testament to the national identity of the Czechoslovak Republic that it preferred to have Wenceslas depicted with a simple helmet rather than the much more widely known crown of St. Wenceslas. Instead of the imperial orb and scepter, Wenceslas is depicted with a sword of St. Wenceslas. A king wouldn't have been as compatible with a young democracy as a holy knight. The coin's inscription quotes a medieval hymn, which dates back to the 12th century. St. Wenceslas, do not let us or our descendants perish. Although these coins were intended as trade coins, they were sometimes minted in the tiniest of mintages. In 1930, for example, only 394 specimens of the 10 ducat coin were produced. This 5 ducat piece is even rarer. It was minted in 1938 in just 56 specimens. In 1951, Czechoslovakia minted this coin type for the last time. 56 specimens of the 10 ducat coin were minted. 100 of the 5 ducat coin were minted. 200 of the double ducat. And 500 of the ducat. The fact that the Lischka collection includes all four denominations of this year is very impressive. Dr. Pavel Lischka put decades into compiling this ensemble. The next series we'll be presenting is almost just as rare. It dates back to 1934 and celebrates the mining industry of Kremnitsa, which has been achieving remarkable yields since the 1930s. 1935, the year after this coin was minted, saw the best result of the entire 20th century. 221.53 kilograms of gold. The coin inscription therefore rejoices in the revival of the mining industry in Kremnitsa. The obverse of this coin type depicts the patron saint of Kremnitsa, 
St. Catherine with her broken wheel. The wheel still forms part of the city's coat of arms today, as does the coat of arms of Charles I of Anjou. It was he who granted Kremnitzer the status of a town in 1328 and founded its mint there. The Kremnitzer mint has been in operation since 1329. It still mints Slovakia's euros to this day. The reverse depicts the mines of Kremnica. Beneath them and on the right, we see a face worker toiling with a hammer and mallet. His modern counterpart is depicted on the left. The modern mine worker is using an air-powered percussion drill, an original model of which is pictured here. This image shows how these air-powered percussion drills were used in the construction of the Lötschberg tunnel which was built around the same time. This series is also enormously rare. Only 68 specimens of the 10 ducat coin were minted. 70 were minted of the 5 ducat coin, 159 of the double ducat and 288 of the 1 ducat coin. Even the later restrikes are extremely rare and sought after. Finally, we'll present two more commemorative coins of Czechoslovakia. In 1932, this commemorative coin was produced to mark the 100th birthday of Miroslav Tirsch. Born into a Sudeten German family, Tirsch was an ardent supporter of a Czech national state. He founded the Czech Gymnastics Association Sokol through which the gymnastics movement conquered the Slavic countries. In 1933, Czechoslovakia honored the recently deceased politician Dr. Antonin Schwela with a commemorative coin. Schwela was the son of a landowner and had been representing the interest of landowners in the Bohemian Parliament since 1908. After the First World War, he became the leader of the Agrarian Party which is alluded to on the reverse of the coin with an image of a sower. This image could also be interpreted in a figurative sense, however. After all, as Minister of the Interior, Schwela was substantially involved in the new constitution of the Czechoslovak Republic. Many of the coins we've presented in this film are so rare that they are not included in most catalogues of world coins. The auction of the Lischka collection is a unique opportunity for all specialist collectors of Czechoslovak gold coins to acquire pieces that probably won't appear on the market again for the next few decades. We hope this film has piqued your curiosity a little. It would be wonderful to see you at Künker's Summer Auction, which will be held from 20 to 24 June 2022. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us.